Okay, now we'll talk about the work order screen. The work order screen is accessed from the fourth button down on the right. I am going to switch to absolute mode, which I just did, and go into the work order screen. Uh, this is a screen by which you can download simple cut lists that you can create yourself. It's free, included as part of the uh, standard razor gauge software. Here it shows the first line in the, the first line item in the cut list. Um, I'm going to uh, I've already got this work order open, so I'm going to show you how to open a work order. You just click open work order and sample cut list here. And there it is. Uh, notice the length is 10. Um, over here in my uh, navigation area, if I click move to position, the razor gauge will move to the position called out on this length line. If I click next line, I can navigate through the list. And then when I find the one I want, I can click move to position, and the razor gauge will go there. Uh, you can apply offsets, just like we talked about before. And you have the unload button, as we've discussed before. Now, the neat thing about the work order screen is I can use it in incremental mode. So if I change them back to incremental mode and go into the work order screen, it changes a little bit. Now, now I have a load button and a go button and some, uh, some semi-automatic functionality. These buttons in the upper right do the same thing as before. If I click load, I can enter the stock length and the trim cut, the leading edge trim cut. Uh, if I'm, all my stock is 8 feet and I'm always going to trim 1 inch, I don't have to change anything here, I just click go. If I have varying stock lengths and varying trim cuts, I can change those here before I say go. And what, When I click go, that's going to send the razor gauge out to the proper load position so you can put the material in, make a cut, and, make, and that trim cut will be about where you want it, uh, based on the accuracy of your overall length measurement. Uh, so then once you've done that and clicked load and go, you cycle the saw and trim the part. Now if you click go, uh, the razor gauge is going to advance, in this case 70 and a half inches plus the kerf. Uh, after I cut that part, I go to the next line and push, push go, and it's going to advance 47 and a quarter plus the curve. It does not keep track of quantity. Uh, you have to do that. Now, one thing you can do is click this automatically advance after saw cycle. If you get the tool safe sensor option, uh, then we'll detect that you have cycled the saw, whether it's a manual DeWalt chop saw or a whirlwind chop saw or a cyclone, cyclone 600 upcut saw. Uh, after that tool safe sensor goes off and then back on again, we will advance to the next position after that cycle. Another thing you can do is if you get the auto cycle option, then it will automatically cycle the saw after the move. Uh, that is if you get, the, like I said, the auto cycle option. It has a valve for controlling the clamping and sawing. You can uh, have that functionality with this checkbox if you buy those options. Uh, now I'm going to show you how to make a cut list for the work order screen. I'm going to do it in Excel. You could do it in Notepad, um, anything that will create a comma separated file. Now if you notice here, the first three rows here are line number, length, and quantity. Well that part has to match in your cut list. The first three columns have to be line number, length, and quantity. The remaining seven, we can have a maximum of ten, the remaining seven can be anything you want. Uh, we can put species, width, thickness, job number, customer, and so the fir first line would normally be one, and I am going to drag that down here. Length will say is 12.375, quantity 2, species oak, width 3, thickness uh, 0.75, that can be a fraction if you want, job, and customer, Smith. Okay, now uh, to make these a little different, I'll just increment that column by 1, I'll increment the quantity, the rest of these I'm going to make the same. And there's my cut list. Now I'm going to save it uh, someplace where I remember where it is. And I'll save it as a. Now I'm going to save it as a CSV. 
um, best cut list for video. That CSV makes it a comma separated values file. So I'm going to save that. In this case, I've already done one. Just click OK and yes to those messages. And then I'm going to close Excel. And I'm not going to save it again. OK, now when I go click Open Work Order, I go to um, put that in Documents. And here is my cut list uh, with all the information I put in and I move through. You can see those various things. So that is how the work order screen operates and how you create a cut list. Uh, the preset screen, these are hotkeys that you can define. To define one, you can notice there are four pages and each one has 368, 367, uh, 56 buttons. Um, to set one, you click set a preset, click a button, type in some text, and then type in a value, and click enter. And now when you click that button, the uh, razor gauge will move to that position with one touch. And you can define each one of these. You can also apply the offsets just like uh, we talked about. It tells you here which one is enabled. Uh, you certainly want to keep an eye on that if you're using offsets because anytime you use an offset, if you forget you have one turned on, you can cut some bad parts. And you can have four pages of these uh, presets. And there is a way to rename these so that uh, these, these labels mean something to you rather than just being page one through page four. Again, there is an unload button. Uh, this screen cannot be used in incremental mode.